tell me which is which, which is the push model of ID? Nigeria. 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 Yeah. yeah, because the regulators said, and the banks said, you've got to do this. If you don't do it, you're frozen, etc. That's a push model. It's fine, motivated by a very clear use case. So obviously the pull model is India, because you heard in India, there was no law that said you must get an ADA. There had to be use cases that said, I want to get an ADA. So the two cases I'm going to talk about very briefly, because in some ways they are of interest, but maybe not core to the SADAC discussion. I think what we have here gives us elements which are more core to this afternoon's discussion. But the two I'm going to talk about are pull cases. In other words, nobody is mandating them. And yet, they are making the case to say, come and get this form of ID, digital ID, it's worthwhile. Here's the first one. The first one is actually a type of national EID. So it falls in the same category as ADAR, but with a twist. The twist is, it's available to anyone in the world today. And that's the e-Estonia digital, digital citizenship process. Why am I telling you about this? Well, just think about SADAC's problems today. SADAC problem, you have many different countries, many different standards, getting everyone to talk together. Oh, I can feel the headache coming on now, right? So what if instead we said, well, let's let another country which has solved this problem, which already meets EU standards for KYC, fully under the EIDAS laws, and is willing to offer one of the world's most robust digital platforms for e-government as a service. That's Estonia today. Tiny little country, 1.2 million people that sits very close to Russia and reckons its survival is going to be built on having a digital proposition. And the digital proposition, if you're an Estonian citizen, if you live there, is you can access any government program digitally, as I said earlier, based on a national EID. Three years ago, the Estonian government said, we built a core competence here. And as the online world is growing, there's a demand for secure forms of ID. We will allow anyone in the world to become a digital Estonian. I almost became a digital Estonian. There's only one reason I haven't, because I'll tell you the process. You apply online, you have to submit all sorts of, of things, including your national ID. They screen that. There are extensive background checks that include checking with Interpol lists for criminals, and they do all of that in the background in Estonia. And then they call you into an Estonian embassy. So in my case, the only reason I haven't done it yet is because there isn't one in Boston, there's one in New York City, but I don't have time when I go there. There's one in Pretoria, if any of you would like to go after the session. <laughs> the only one in Africa of Estonia today. You go there, and when you collect your ID, which is based on a card, although it's tokenized for online use, they will capture your biometrics at that time, and they will bind them into a credential. They will charge you 100 euro, right? and you become a digital Estonian. What does that mean? What's the use case? Why would I even think about doing that? Well, digital Estonians can open Estonian bank accounts. Estonia is part of the EU. Right? You can then use that across the EU today. Secondly, digital Estonians, think me, because as I said, I, 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 I forget that, I'll tell you, we're very close to the digital Estonian um, process at the university that we work with in Boston. Um, the other use case is I can open an Estonian company online today. I can be a director of an Estonian company established online without ever going to Estonia. And that company can trade across the EU, right? Remember, Estonia is in the EU today. They do not charge taxes, right? They charge on the basis of residence, and so they charge on the basis of value add. So the play for Estonia is not, their use case for Estonia wasn't we want tax, we want you to come and be taxed. There, there were, there's the two. One is they want to be the world's most prominent digital nation. Their vision is having 10 million digital Estonians in the next 10 years. Remember, there are 1 million Estonians. Right? The second thing is they want to generate demand for Estonian services, business services. Because if you set up a company, you will need to have an Estonian bank account. You will need Estonian auditors or lawyers or you know, whatever. So that's what they're trying to do as an offshore platform. Why am I telling you this? Really just as a provocation, because there is nothing stopping anybody in SADAC today from becoming digital Estonians. They would have to come to Pretoria right now, but Estonia has just started an experiment using a visa processing service called VFS, which actually does your diaspora enrollment for BBN. 
they're, they're private servers. Yeah, if that's a big global service in most countries in the world, probably throughout SADAC, it's being piloted in Korea today. So instead of going to the nearest embassy, which could be a long way away, you go to VFS. They capture the biometrics. They will do this for you. So they've outsourced the enrollments, like you've heard the stories today. So you live in Osaka, you live in Maputo, be a digital Estonian. That, that solves some of your border crossing problems if, if your regulator is willing to accept European EU standards for KYC and money laundering, which are amongst the highest in the world in certain areas today. So the reason for telling you all that is simply to say, you know, that's there today. There are 30,000 people who've become digital Estonians. They're mainly digital, uh, what do they call them, nomads, people who work in many countries. Um, they've come from countries like Finland and India and, and so on. And they've looked for this because it gives them the right to work in the EU, the right to do business in the EU. I'm sorry, not, not to live there. It's not residency, it's digital citizenship. So the point for SADC is just to say, you know, this is now national ID as a service. You can buy it. Right? It's available. So, compared with the task of creating your own, there's an outsourced offering from a little country a long way away from here. Sounds like Star Wars, doesn't it? A long, kind of far, far away or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so let me leave that. But that's a poor example because nobody pushing me to be an EE star, nobody forces me. I would become one because of the benefits that it offers me if I were to do it.